Hey there, friends. Coming to you again with another episode of the Pre-Ride Show presented by Envy. I'm just tripping around all over northeastern San Diego County looking at all the key sectors, posting up some places, and hopefully we might be able to capture some folks out getting a little pre-ride in. I'm at the bottom of Quest Haven, a forced dismount that begins a long five-mile climb. Oh, hey, look at this. Michael, Hola. what's going on? How are you, what are you doing here? You know, just hanging out, looking for uh, folks to talk to. You got a second to sit down with us? Sure, I'm mid-ride, but I got a few minutes. All right, let's do it, man. Come on over to my Sweet. office. Sweet, let's do it. We're back, we're live, we're in the office, we're in this beautiful outdoor setting at the bottom of Quest Haven, one of the most, perhaps the most decisive sectors of the ride. I'm here with Michael Marks, the founder, the visionary, the architect of the Belgian Waffle Ride. Michael, how you feeling? We're a few days out from the, from the race, how you feeling? Why are you blaming me for all that stuff? <laughs> you started this. I, I feel really, as you can tell, stressed out and uh, lacking in sleep and worried and excited. All the things that sort of uh, uh, attach themselves to you in the lead up to something like this. So, yeah, I'm freaking out. Good, good. Yeah. That's, a, that's a good feeling to have, making sure we consider all of the great things that go into this. Um, like any good story, it starts at the beginning. Let's go back to the beginning because we've come a really long way, brother. We've come a long way from sitting on beach chairs in the spy parking lot eating uh, uh, soggy waffles that served out of the back of a trolley car. Um, nine years ago, would you have ever expected that we would be where we are now, bringing 4,000 athletes, 65 plus brands to the North City and taking over the cycling world for the next couple of weeks? Well, we always had this vision of building it like that. Um, I didn't think that 10 years uh, later, I'd be sitting here on a trail at Quest Haven with flies buzzing around us talking about the craziness that's ensued the past decade. but. The vision was always to build it and build it and build it. And um, if you build it, they will come. And that's still happening. I don't know where all these riders come from, though. Like every night, there's another 12 people that sign up. And I'm like, well, where, where have you been? And are there any more of you out there? How could there be any more that are going to do this ride, you know? Uh, keep coming though, that's fine. We're, we're still open. We've got all 50 states represented, a number of countries in Europe. The Canadians are still trying to, to sneak Poor across Canadians, the border. Yeah. I know, I know. Yeah. When you look back and, and at all the memorable things that have occurred, whether they the, the sprint finish uh, you know, three years ago, um, some of the other things, what stands out to you as some of those most remarkable elements of the years gone by? Well, Brian McCullough's victory, not only by way of the sprint finish, but just the way he rode, and he rode thinking he was chasing, which I think was what made him ride out of his head. Uh, he, his, I watched the whole thing unfold, and it was it was such a magnificent performance. And then for him to out sprint Ted at the end was just. I watched it as they came around the turn and sprinting in to the finish line, and I could see joy jumping up and down, pregnant joy, mm -hmm. jumping up and down as he came in. It was just, that, that still gives me uh, goosebumps to think about. I also think this area we're sitting in now, which as you know, is the beginning of the final climb. Mm -hmm. So if we were to look up there at the top of a mountain, it's five and a half miles from here. You got to climb through this dirt and then up the wall, then another wall, then you get to double peak. Um, the amount of energy that gets put into this space with the DJ and the bacon and the scantily clad people, forgive us, and um, all the fun that gets interjected here spontaneously by people that want to be in this particular oasis, that part's really fun to me too. That means people, it's captured people's imagination enough for them to participate and give to it in their own way. Um, so I, this is a really punctuating moment in the course right here. You got to dismount there. Believe me, you have to dismount because on, on fresh legs, I've attempted to uh, bunny hop that cyclocross style and I didn't make it. And if only there was someone here to capture that on film, we'd have perpetual fodder for this particular location. Um, but yeah, this, this whole thing right here is magical. So this is a, a, a place that I think is really important to the race. That vision that you talked about is both bucket list for the majority of people that enter the, the ride, but then it's also now attracting some of the most elite racers, not only here in the country, uh, but also from Europe. 
what what part of that are you most proud about or 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 is there a part of this that the ride that you really stands out on your mind that, that makes you feel really uh, that you've achieved something very accomplished something really cool well I, I don't know if it's achieving but the fact that you know national champions and world champions and um really great riders that i respect and love watching on tv you know they email me and it's like this friendly exchange and they just want to come and do the event they're not asking for appearance money or for anything they're just saying hey can i come and race in your event and um, what's it all about and can you tell me you know what kind of tires i should use uh, that kind of just fun stuff with really rad people that that's a that's a treat so that's a healthy byproduct of this effort i think absolutely great people yeah um last year because of stupid covid we got shut down and we're only able to do one of the planned four events this year full schedule we're expanding out of san diego and got <clears throat> three other new events coming um that's got to feel pretty good to uh, line us up for what the rest of the year entails just a lot of stress really um I know you neglected to mention Blazing Saddles because it's not part of the BWR uh, quadruple, if you will, uh, but that adds a bit of stress too because that's a three-day music, food, and cycling expo with all sorts of craziness. You know, Woodstock meets Sea Otter, or maybe Coachella meets Sea Otter. Um, so that adds stress. So the next four months are just going to go by in a blur. Uh, uh, and I'm kind of freaking out about that too it's almost hard to look forward to those because we've got what we got coming here in just a few days but yeah all those are already in motion and those dominoes are already starting to fall but to answer your question uh it's so cool that you know basically in a month's time we'll be in Asheville, this completely different and uh equally beautiful in its own way perhaps more so the really challenging course even though it's shorter um like we get to go and do this same thing here with excited people there. And then a month later, we're back in Cedar City, which is an incredibly unique place uh, and a totally different course, mostly gravel. Uh, and then we're in Lawrence, Kansas, which you know is the only part of Kansas that has some climbing. And that thing just goes up and down. And um, it's for Steve Tilford, for the Steve Tilford Foundation. And he had a fixation with the number 11. So that course is actually 111.1 miles. Love it. Yeah. So yeah, each one of them has their own uniqueness, um, com completely different than the other events. Knowing you the way I do, you're always planning, you're always looking forward. What, and when you look at the San Diego event, what's in the back of your mind maybe uh, thinking for the years ahead, whether it's course, whether it's activation, whether it's the expo, what, uh, what do you, what, what's, what's tickling around in there that uh, I, I think we, we might need see? this in Austin, Texas. I think uh, Victoria, BC needs one. You know, we've tried with Colorado. They're, they're very difficult to uh, get anything permitted there. Um, and then of course, Japan, the most likely of all places for a Belgian waffle ride. So those are the ones that are top of mind. Yeah, yeah. And what advice, would, knowing, knowing the difficulty of this course, uh, the challenge it presents, what advice would you give that, that, uh, th those folks that are kind of in that middle group, that bucket list sort of athlete? What advice would you give them coming into the race uh, in a few days? Well, it's too late to train more. So I would say taper more, um, eat a lot, drink early, drink often, eat more, find a good group, be friendly to them, point things out. Remember, you guys are all on this together uh, and work together. Uh, pace yourself, then drink some more, eat some more, and then you'll be at the first aid station. Um, and um, also use a wider tire than you're probably uh, anticipating using. Um, less tire pressure than you're probably thinking about using and more gearing than you probably have on your bike. More, more, more. Those are the admonitions. I love it. Um... But I got to get your favorites, knowing this stacked field of both men and women athletes that we have coming. Any jump to mind as ones that you're looking at to uh, take the title? Um, I appreciate all of them for just being here to party with us. I know each one of them has their own uh, distinct contributions, right? Each one has a different thing, whether it's Keegan as a mountain biker, Pete as a you know world tour guy that likes to be in the dirt. You know, a sentimental favorite again is Brian McCullough uh, for what he did and what he does for people. And um, 
he's the people's champion. You know, having someone like Lars Boom, a former world champion in cyclocross and a world tour rider, uh, Alex Howes, you know, people like that, plus the women's field, um, there's, it's just so awesome to see all these incredible athletes coming out to, to duke it out on this course and have fun, eat waffles and drink beer and, and ride bikes in between. They're all really great. So I can't really say I want one to win more than the other. Certainly, um, it's always neat when someone uh, repeats their victory too. So that would be, that would be Pete's. Uh, he's got to earn his waffles this year though, for sure. He does. Um, but what an exciting group. And they also, the other thing that I would say is all these people love each other, support each other. Uh, there's no rivalry, no antipathy, you know, no one's going to be doing anything other than working together until the end. Yeah. yeah. I, and I think that's part of what the ethos of the ride that you've created yeah. and pushed out there and, and part of that overall vision. So, well, actually I, I want people to hurt each other the whole time. And that was the, you know, the initial idea was get rid of all the guys that sit on, on the Saturday group rides just to do this, the sprint finish, like create a course that, they can't exist on even for 20 miles. So get rid of them. And then what you're left with is a group of people that are hard, that wanna, that wanna make it hard, but also wanna ride together with other people yeah. of the same ilk. So the idea is to, originally was to get rid of those people. I think we didn't get rid of them. Well, that's why you're gonna be in the lead car with a purple card ready to toss out at any moment for anybody that's pulling any sort of shenanigans like that, right? I'll give him a verbal warning first, okay. yeah. Well, that's because yeah. of the, the, the yeah. nice guy that you are. Yeah. All right. Man, we're looking forward to it. I, I, it's a great pleasure to have watched this, this race grow over the past years and work with you, for you, next to you, on it. It's, yes, it's thank you. It's so much fun, and I, I just uh, cannot wait for the next couple of days to go by and, and bring everybody to town here and see the smiles and the dirty faces and enjoy Sam's great waffles and the Lost Abbey beer that we're going to have. So. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for everything for the last 10 years. What a fun ride. I always know like 10 days out, I, I start to ask, how do we add a few more days? How do we get a few more days back? It's always that. The last you know 10 days is like, holy shit, why didn't we get this stuff done? Uh, and that's what we're doing now. That's what we're doing now. We're into no yeah. sleep mode. Uh, Michael Marks, the founder, visionary behind Belgian Waffle Ride. Thanks for sitting down with us. We can't wait for the, uh, the day to come. We're looking forward to a fantastic event and taking over North City and uh, the, all the eyes of the cycling world will be upon us. Thank you, Jim Miller, the voice of the Belgian Waffle Ride. I'm just proud to be here, man. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for sitting into this episode of the Pre-Ride Show presented by Envy. Make sure on our YouTube channel to subscribe and click the little bell next to it so that you get notifications of all the future episodes that are about to drop. Thanks for looking in. You. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, folks. Sorry to photobomb. Not at all. That's all right. Do you guys have a sofa we could borrow? I need to take a nap. <laughs>